a Chinese Type 96B tank experienced a wheel dislodgement and track failure during the International Army Games 2020 in Russia, eliciting laughter from the audience. The Russian commentator remarked, what happened? Let's take a look. We can see what's happening. Everyone take a look. Almost on the sprocket. Yes. Did everyone see the wheel? The wheel fell off. The Chinese tank is falling apart. It's a complete disaster. In another instance of military equipment issues, Russia faced setbacks with a batch of Chinese imported Desert Cross 1003 all-terrain vehicles on the Ukrainian battlefield. These vehicles, struck and severely damaged by the Ukrainian military, have become a focal point in debates over the performance capabilities of Chinese military equipment. Russia has reportedly procured 537 units of this model and plans to receive an additional 1,590 units by April 24, 2024. Although capable of carrying 550 kilograms of cargo and a 300 kilogram trailer, it was noted that the vehicle had limited defense against harsh weather and enemy fire due to inadequate protective measures. Questions remain about the origin of its components and its dependency on 92-octane gasoline, as well as doubts about its effectiveness in challenging muddy frontline terrains. Russia has managed to circumvent international sanctions to purchase these vehicles from China because they were classified as civilian rather than standard military equipment. In response to the poor performance of land vehicles, China has shifted to supplying large quantities of ammunition to Russia. Vladimir Putin has boasted that Russia's production of 155 mm ammunition is 10 times that of the United States. This claim has raised concerns in the U.S., leading to speculations that Russia's production capacity is unlikely to have increased so rapidly without external assistance. Indeed, prior to Xi Jinping's visit to Russia on March 20th this year, U.S. officials confirmed that ammunition used by Russia in Ukraine contained Chinese components. By June, U.S. media revealed more details about the Chinese military aid in terms of ammunition. Reports mentioned a trainload of tens of tons of smokeless powder crossing the China-Russia border at the end of last year, enough to produce at least 80 million rounds of ammunition. This powder was transported to the Barnal Ammunition Plant in central Russia, with the supplier being China's state-owned Polytechnologies. This crucial information was first disclosed through U.S. trade data aggregator Import Genius. Further investigation revealed that the powder, including type T125 propellant, worth approximately $2 million, originated from a chemical industry company in Sichuan, China. Although the powder was ostensibly disguised as a civilian product, its export would have required special approval from the Central Military Commission of China, indicating official Chinese military support for Russia. The U.S. identified the Chinese origin of the ammunition based on unique components in the formulations used by the Chinese military. For instance, Luda Media, an overseas Chinese self-media outlet, disclosed that Chinese-made 7.62x54mm ammunition contained distinctive components like double base nitro-11 and stabilizer number 2, unique to Chinese ammunition. These unique components enabled the U.S. to trace the origins of ammunition used on the Ukrainian battlefield. Ludi Media also revealed challenges China faced in mimicking American ammunition formulations. China replicated the U.S.'s passivation technique used before mixing gunpowder to prevent accidental explosions. However, they discovered that bullets failed to fire properly due to the substandard quality of the initiators used by China. Consequently, China cautiously proceeded with the gunpowder production process using wet granulators for mixing to avoid explosion risks. Furthermore, the production lines in China frequently face static electricity issues increasing risks and casualties during ammunition production. China's provision of military equipment and supplies to Russia also occurs through more complex and covert means. A report by the Washington Post on April 10 disclosed a secret operation by Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi to produce and covertly transport up to 40,000 rockets to Russia while keeping the operation secret to avoid angering Western allies. The chemical ingredients for these rockets, manufactured at a plant known as Factory 18, actually originated from China. This unveils China's influence in countries like Egypt, Algeria, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, which have become transit hubs for Chinese military aid to Russia. Wang Yi, China's foreign minister, visited Egypt and Algeria in 2021. This meeting was potentially linked to this strategic arrangement. South Africa and its neighboring countries also play significant roles in the network of Chinese military aid. South Africa's Paramount Group, specializing in armored vehicles, has collaborated with Kazakhstan to provide military equipment to Russia. 
China's significant influence in South Africa through investments and ownership in local arms factories and leveraging countries with close ties to China, such as Uganda and Zimbabwe, provides low-cost raw materials. South Africa's status as a former Commonwealth nation with a relatively neutral international image makes it an ideal location to circumvent Western oversight, especially in military assistance. In the aviation sector, China's support for Russia has been significant. Just four days after the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, the Chinese company HEMS 999 provided two helicopters to Russia. Additionally, Tianjin Huarong Aviation transferred four Airbus helicopters to Russia, which were given to the Russian Ural Helicopter Company, the main supplier to the Russian National Guard deployed in Ukraine. This transaction indicates that, despite being ostensibly commercial, these helicopters play a crucial role in Russia's military operations. Regarding unmanned aerial vehicles, China's assistance is also noteworthy. According to data from the open source research organization Molfar Global, a company based in Shantou, China, sent 1,000 drones to Russia two months before the war. While the company promotes itself as a children's toy wholesaler on its website and social media, the Russian recipient company, Samson, also presents itself as a toy wholesaler. However, the actual use of these drones is far from their superficial identity. Analysis of Russian customs data by Nikkei News shows that on February 1, 2023, Russia's status compliances company imported three drones with a takeoff weight between 25 and 150 kilograms from Shenzhen Kushin Intelligent Development Company, totaling nearly $90,000. Although these drones were described as civilian models in customs records, they were explicitly marked for special military operations purposes. Tomoyuki Furutani, a drone expert from Keio University, points out that these large drones can be used for military reconnaissance and potentially modified for attacks. Additionally, small drones produced by China's DJI company are widely used for military reconnaissance and dropping small bombs. These drones are mainly imported through Central Asia, Belarus, and the Middle East, friendly countries to Russia, under the guise of civilian products. However, at least 37 drones were explicitly marked as for special military operations in customs records during the first four months of this year, totaling approximately $103,000. According to data from the Observatory of Economic Complexity, China's drone exports to Russia in 2022 were valued at $23 million. These drones are equipped with satellite communication and encryption systems and have complex password control mechanisms. Even the smallest drones have the capability to drop grenades, highlighting their practical application in military operations. This is widely regarded on the international stage as obvious military assistance from China to Russia. In the field of metal materials, China's support for Russia is equally significant. In 2022, China's titanium alloy exports to Russia reached $18 million, almost double the previous year. These key materials, including titanium plates and rods, were sent to Russian anti-aircraft missile launcher developer NPP Start and aircraft maintenance company S7 Technics. Furthermore, China delivered magnesium alloy to Tupolev, which is responsible for manufacturing and maintaining Tu-95 and Tu-160M long-range bombers used for cruise missile attacks in the Ukraine conflict. Interestingly, shipments of alumina from China to Russia increased more than 25 times over the previous year in 2022. Alumina is widely used in producing armored vehicles, personal protective equipment, bulletproof shields, missile casings, bullets, explosives, and propellants. Additionally, the manufacturer of the Kamas Typhoon armored vehicle, Magnitogorsk Iron and Steel Works, has received at least 520 batches of spare parts, welding machines, and laser lathes from China. This further confirms China's involvement in Russian military equipment manufacturing. Some Chinese companies, such as Wuchi, Tianxing Steel, and Xi'an Alpha Metal, have offices in Moscow and showcase images of fighter jets and naval ships on their Russian websites, directly reflecting their active role in meeting Russia's military needs. In the export of optical sites, China's role is also significant. Since early 2022, China has sent a large number of optical sites to over 50 companies in Russia, doubling last year's import value to $2.5 million. Data from Mulfar, obtained from the Chinese trade company 52WMB, shows that Yiwu, Woji Optical Instruments supplied about 2,500 optical sites to Russia's CEK company. Though these products were marked for hunting on the invoices, they can be fitted on military weapons. Molfar's research also reveals that Chinese exports of turbojet engines and radar-guided missile navigation systems are typically transshipped through India and Costa Rica to Russia. 
Additionally, as reported by Politico on July 24th, Russian buyers have ordered hundreds of thousands of bulletproof vests and helmets from Shanghai H. Wind Company, sufficient to equip the large number of personnel Russia has mobilized since invading Ukraine. China-Russia customs data shows that the export of ceramic materials used to make bulletproof vests from China to Russia increased by 69% during the same period, totaling over $225 million. Notably, Silva, a company located in a remote area of eastern Siberia, filed a declaration in January for an order of 100,000 bulletproof vests and 100,000 helmets from Shanghai H. Win. The company was immediately dissolved after completing the transaction to evade international sanctions. According to a report by The Washington Post on April 13, a leaked confidential document from the U.S. Department of Defense revealed that the U.S. successfully eavesdropped on Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service SVR and obtained key intelligence. These intelligence reports, submitted to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, show that the Central Military Commission of the CCP secretly approved an increase in lethal military aid to Russia, seeking to maintain the secrecy of this operation. The document marked top secret reveals that the CCP tried to disguise its military support to Russia as civilian goods, including disassembled ammunition and raw materials. These materials were routed through Egypt, Algeria, South Africa, and other countries, eventually assembled in Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, and then secretly transported to Russia. The export of all these military supplies, whether approved by China's Central Military Commission or the General Equipment Department, was fully managed by China's state-owned defense corporation, the North Industries Group Corporation. These developments underscore the intricate and multifaceted nature of the intelligence and trust dynamics between China and Russia. Xi Jinping has always wanted his decisions to remain absolutely confidential, known only to himself. However, the leak reported by the Washington Post reveals a significant fact. Some of Xi Jinping's key decisions may have been known to Russia, and this information may have been deliberately or inadvertently passed to the U.S. This not only exposes potential trust issues between China and Russia, but could also lead to a change in Xi Jinping's strategic considerations towards Russia. He may be contemplating whether the CCP's secret efforts to weaken or influence Russia's strategic capabilities are already known to Russia.